Oh, folks. Folks, I gotta tell you, I'm getting really sick and tired of the Ken Kratz circle jerk. Now, it was nice and quiet for a while. I had thought that Kratz had learned his fucking lesson. Apparently, I was delusional. Oh, good fucking Lord. Okay, so a couple days ago, Kratz was a guest on the Dr. Drew podcast. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can hear this fucking bale of horse shit. And now a fellow YouTuber, Dave Sale, he put up a clip from that podcast that is really interesting. But I wanted to go through the podcast with with y'all just because what the fuck was this shit? Oh my God. Okay. Now I would like to preface this with the fact that up until I listened to this bullshit last night, I actually respected Dr. Drew. I really did. Just like prior to the announcement that she was going to hold some kind of a stupid bullshit show with Ken Kratz, I respected Judge Pirro. I no longer do because you fucking dumbass. But you know, you, you go through this podcast and the only thing I want to do is reach through my screen, grab Kratz by the neck and shake him and ask him what the fuck is wrong with you that you're not shutting the fuck up. Nobody cares. And any publisher stupid enough to publish any of his fucking books is going to lose money on that deal. Because I'm sorry, but I'm not even going to spend the money to buy a copy to burn it. I'm just going to boycott the shit out of it. And I urge all of my viewers to do the same thing. Um, on this podcast, you know, it starts out with this whole bullshit of, you know, go ahead, Kratz, tell everybody your story. Like anybody gives a shit. We know the story. And the thing is, Dr. Drew, is that... How in the fuck can you claim the name doctor and you don't hear the blatant, flat-out lying that is occurring? First of all, he is stuttering over himself. He is tripping over himself so much that he can't even form a coherent sentence. Talking about his drug dependency, which fueled his unhealthy behaviors, and he was addicted to Xanax and Ambien and Vicodin and yada, 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 and then has the balls to compare himself to Heath Ledger. Kratz, Kratzy, on your best day in your youth, you never could have compared to Heath Ledger. So get the fuck over yourself and don't you ever, ever take that man's name in vain again, you piece of shit. Um, and the funny thing is, is that he states that all of this crap happened after the Avery case, after the Avery case, which is hilarious because in the OLR report, he states that he started abusing these drugs during the Avery case. So, which is it, Kratz? Did you start abusing drugs during the Avery case or after? I'm willing to go with during because that's the only way that can explain the bullshit that you then ensued. As for your sexual bullshit, uh, you were raping women since way before the Avery case, so fuck you and blaming your sexual deviancy on your drug addiction. Then he starts with that whole, um, that whole thing of like, I've come out the other end of treatment, the other end, like he's done. And he calls it, and he, he, he pronounces that his diagnosis is narcissistic personality disorder. Anybody who's actually been to a psychologist or been to a psychiatrist or been to a fucking, a treatment program, which he claims to have been a part of, which I call bullshit knows that there is no such thing as I went through treatment and I'm done in those realms. You are in a state of treatment for the rest of your fucking life. And the fact that he's using this kind of verbiage tells me that he's full of shit. He never went to treatment. I'm willing to bet he never got off the fucking drugs. And I'm willing to bet that he never actually fucking took care of himself. And you know, I have supporting evidence for that. 
the supporting evidence of which is during his whole ordeal with the whole fucking OLR and all that bullshit and them, you know, kicking his ass out of there. He claimed these same things, but then he never produced one medical record from a doctor, from a treatment center, nothing. He never fucking produced it. And he never produced testimony from a doctor. If you went to a doctor for these things, why wouldn't you produce these records? The only reason why I can think of that you wouldn't produce records like that is because you don't fucking have them because it never happened. That's all I'm saying, folks. Um... And what I love is at the six minute, 20 second mark, he talks about with the sexual acting out, acting out, you call sexual harassment and rape acting out? No, no, sir. No, no. My two-year-old acts out. He stomps his foot and screams his head off when he doesn't get a cookie. That's not acting out. That's criminal fucking behavior. Um, you know, and then he claims to go to like Narcotics Anonymous and Sexual Addicts Anonymous and blah, blah, blah. Again, where's the proof? Where's the statement from your sponsor? Huh? Um, and at the 8 minute 16 second mark, Dr. Drew asks him if he's angry with his doctor for not monitoring his progress or, you know, his his treatment properly. And Kratz replies with, I don't think so. Yeah, you're probably not mad at your doctor because there's no doctor to be mad at. I'm willing to bet that you never went to a doctor for anything and you got those fucking pills on the sly. You bought them on the street, didn't you, Kratz? You piece of shit. And he claims that, that he was taking two milligrams a day and I'm going, that's enough to tranquilize a horse the fuck is wrong with you? He was, he was saying that he was taking two megs of, of, um, Xanax. You take two megs of Zanzibar's a day and you don't think that that was impairing your fucking judgment. And you, there is evidence that you were taking two megs a day during the prosecution of the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases. Why the fuck haven't these cases been reopened? Oh my God. And he says that the prescription was for one mill milligram and then he admits to self-medicating. You fucking scuzzball. Oh, and I love that at the nine, nine minute, 25 second mark where he says, I'm not one to blame others. I'm never the type that's gonna blame others. Oh, bullshit. You blame everybody but yourself. You don't take responsibility for shit. You, you know, and if you don't believe me on that, folks, read his OLR report. Read the fucking report when he was fucking removed from DA of Calumet County. Read it. Read it. Every fucking word in any of his briefs is him blaming other people for his problems and his and the consequences for his own actions. It's hilarious. It'd be hilarious if it wasn't so fucking pathetic. And the funny thing is, is that he, he ta he's talking about his extramarital affairs. So this is what we're calling rape now. Extramarital affairs. Really? You fuck. Oh. And I love how, he's like, how he tells Dr. Drew and he tries to say it real nonchalant. You know, you know, I used to be the chairman of the Crime Victims Rights Board. You're still exploiting that shit. You're still acting like it gives you any credibility that you are, that you're the former chairman. You were removed from that position for sexting a fucking domestic violence victim and you're still plugging it like it gives you credibility. Oh God, you are a slimy piece of shit. And, oh, my favorite is when he's talking about how like, no one in his office called him on his shit. And he says, uh, when people are looking the other way, they're not doing you any favors. It's not their responsibility, Kratz. It's your responsibility. It is your responsibility for your fucking addictions. That is the very definition of an addictive person. It's their addiction, but it's your problem. It's your fault that they're addicted to something. 
You know, Kratz, the fact that you are still saying shit like that tells me that you never went to treatment one. And how Dr. Drew didn't see that, being a doctor, I will never fucking know. And um, what I love is when he says that he was fortunate to have never engaged in worse behavior. What could be worse than rape? Kratz? Huh? What could possibly be worse than rape? Pedophilia? Because that's about the only thing that I can think of that would be worse. You fucking dickweed. Then we get into the good stuff. Meanwhile, the whole fucking time he's on this interview, he is so rude. Oh my God. He's not letting Dr. Drew ask him any questions. He's not letting him talk. He's just... You know, kids, I know it's easy for people to say that I talk a lot because we're on... When you guys see me, we're in this format. It's me talking to a camera. So it's easy to say that I talk a lot because... There's nobody else here. There's nobody else on screen with me. But if you uh, were able to watch the Trial Talk Live interview, you would actually see I, I, you know, I try to be polite about it. And, you know, yes, my mind goes a mile a minute and I do tend to, to go run off at the mouth. But if somebody's inviting me onto their show, I'm going to at least let them ask the fucking question before I start talking. That's just fucking manners, you dickhead. <sighs> Now, at the 33-minute mark is when the good shit starts happening. And he says the infamous phrase where he says, you know, the Stephen Avery trial and the Brendan Dassey trial were really similar. Well, I should fucking hope so. You were fucking convicting both of them for killing the same woman. And he says, you know, with the false confession, and he says it twice. And then immediately after that, he says, well, perceived by law enforcement you're backpedaling. You know shit's about to blow up in your fucking face and you're backpedaling. I'm going to let you guys listen to the clip now. Dassey case is every bit as interesting as, as the Avery case for different for different reasons, you know, with the false confession and the, and uh, and just the manipulation of this uh, the, this young man, both institutional, that is uh, perceived at least from uh, law enforcement as well as uh, as his own family, how he was a really. Um, sacrificed and how his plea offer that he had accepted uh, was really thwarted um, because it was going to make Stephen's case a more difficult a case. It's such a, a tragic uh, outcome for, uh, you know, for that uh, 16-year-old. Can you believe that shit? <laughs> then he proceeds to blame Brendan's family. For his fuck up, he says that Brendan was sacrificed by the Avery and Dassey families and he blames them for Brendan not taking the plea. And he says that Brendan had much less involvement. Are you fucking shitting me? According to the narrative that you fucking put out there during Stephen Avery's trial and Brendan Dassey's trial, Brendan was all up in that shit. And now you're claiming that he had much less involvement than Stephen Avery? Are you fucking shitting me? He then goes on to say, you know, that with the phone calls that would happen between Brendan and his mother, that's when they were talking and talking Brendan and all this shit. Well, here's the thing, Kratz. Where are the recordings? All of those phone calls to and from the prison are recorded. So where are the recordings supporting your bullshit saying that Barb talked him into anything? Huh? Yeah, I fucking thought so. You can't produce them because it never fucking happened, you prick. Uh, and then he, he states that the Averys are cult-like, and, and he talks about Stephen Avery like he's the leader of this cult. Oh my God, you are a special kind of stupid. I bet you lick windows, you fucking slime. And what I absolutely love is how... Um, you know, he's talking about, you know, the kind of evidence that was presented in making a murderer. They're judging me on that. No, crap. The kind of evidence that I'm going to present in my book is stuff that wasn't presented in the documentary. Guess what, crap? 90% of the people that are climbing up your ass right now have seen every inch of evidence. You want to know how? It's called the Freedom of Information Act. 
We have the case file, asshole. We've seen it all. And not a fucking shred of it says guilty. Not a shred. Not one bit of it. Sorry. And what I love is here, Dr. Drew jumps in and proceeds to start blowing crats by saying, you know, oh, people are basing their stuff off of the TV show. First of all, it's not a TV show, jackass. It's a fucking documentary. Number two, a documentary which, by the way, Ken Kratz had not one, not two, but three opportunities to be involved in. Three times the filmmakers requested an interview with him, and he adamantly refused to take part in the filming. You can't blame them for presenting one side when one side of it didn't want to even take part. Number one. Number two, no, we are not basing our opinions on just a TV show. We have read the evidence. We have not done like Miss McBride and read the fucking court transcripts. We have gone through that case file with a fine-toothed comb. And we have seen everything. And there is not a fucking shred of proof. We've seen shit you haven't seen, Dr. Drew. And we have seen shit that I'm willing to bet Ken Kratz hasn't seen. Because even if he saw it, he was drugged up at the time. So, fuck you and your horse. You fucking moron. And Kratz, do a lot of other people a favor and stop doing interviews. Because now you're just ruining other people's careers like you ruined your own. You fucking waste of space. All right, kids. That's what I've got on the Ken Kratz interview. I stopped listening at about 36 minutes. I couldn't fucking hear anymore. I was going to go crazy. So if you have the Constitution to listen to this bullshit, if you have the mental fortitude to handle it, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you soon.